Hey guys, Anthony for Before Diesel. Um, we're just going to do a quick Q and A, so a heap of information for you and answer for your answers for your questions. But before we do, have a look at this oil leak. This is we've um, we've shown you these before in other videos, but let's just have a quick look at this. Um, is it an oil leak or not? All right, guys, we're just uh, having a look at this oil leak. Is that an oil leak? Is it an oil leak? That is the question. Is that an oil leak? Well, I don't see a drip there. It's a little bit damp. What is it? Well, I don't know. Uh, never had to repair one of these because I haven't seen one bad enough. We had one recently. I'm not sure if I did a video or even released a video yet. Um, where we may consider, look, you can hide the oil leak by smearing RTV silicon along that join there, you know, along there. And that's not really the oil leak, it's kind of hiding it, but that's that small amount of oil, it might just make it look tidy, but this one, I don't even think it deserves a smear. I'm gonna call this rust protection. Uh, it's certainly not gonna, the the level of the transmission, the sorry, the transfer case, it's not gonna get any lower from a leak this minor. I don't see them get worse even at higher Ks. So let's monitor the situation. Let's just clean it up, keep an eye on it, and um, see if it ends up being a butter bing, a butter boom, or a butter bing, butter boom. Anyway, just a quick one, guys. Wanted to show you that. Yeah, so oil leak, uh, well, you know, yes and no. You can decide whether it's an oil leak. It's not a drip. I don't think it's bad enough that we need to do anything about it, and we see this quite a lot, okay? So I'll say it's a common, it's not a common problem. It's not a problem, it's a common thing. Okay, also questions about bleeding the cooling system. So when bleeding the cooling system, take the, this off the top of the radiator or the tank. Bleeding the cooling system. All right, so if you take that off the tank, uh, the air can come out, let's say. Keep it simple. And we're gonna pour some coolant in. I don't always talk. Anyway, so a bit of information there regarding um, bleeding or refilling the cooling system. We've got some more information in other videos and more videos coming with a lot more detail bleeding the cooling system and there'll be more after that. So make sure you subscribe and you've got the bell on so you get that alert when that information comes along. Now, let's just have a look at cleaning an inlet manifold for a minute. Just having a bit of a play around and a scrape around more of a play with the goo to demonstrate to you. Uh, look, it looks bad, okay? There's perspective is needed on this one, okay? So you can look at it, it's dirty, it looks bad, it's black, but look at the opening. Is it really blocked? Is it really gonna make any difference in performance to your engine? Maybe a little bit, but not much. Let's check it out. All right, so cleaning inlet manifolds, right? First thing we do is, this is a one-handed inlet manifold. Look, you got to see, guys. Look, it's not that bad. See how thick that... I'll make it look bad, but see, it's not like a thick build-up or anything, you know? It's like, it's like you know, it's not what you want to see, but it's not changing the performance of anything, if you know what I mean, you know? So we kind of need an old rag here so we can... You know what I mean? So... You know, it's going to make it all look nice, but I don't think it's going to... Uh, That one was probably one of the worst ones, maybe. One of the worst ports here. I'm not doing a good job here. I'm just trying to give you a, a look, a look in on. You know, I don't do this. I'm just doing this to show you. If you pull your manifold off, you know, like uh, there's just not a lot in there, mate. You know, the most of the this one, this one this is kind of like one. This is kind of pretty bad up this end there. Yeah, that could be that could be messing with things, but yeah, so we've got to scrape it, and we've got to spray it with degreaser, more scraping, more brushing. Pretty uh, pretty cruddy job there, right? Mm. Right, all right. So I've got a, a system for that. I've had my play with it. All right, Johnny, mate, you want to uh, have a crack at this whenever you're ready, mate. This is off 
another vehicle um, that the client said it looked fairly clean. Uh, we're doing injectors, whatever, I think, or something, something somewhere, somehow. Anyway, included a bit of an EGR clean, and there was quite a lot of crud in there. And the picture of the camera just doesn't show you, but let's have a look at that anyway, hey? Oh, look at this mess. This is just out of an EGR that the client thought was clean. I could, he said, I can still see steel colour, you know, it's clean. That's just in the EGR elbow. Terrible. While we're at it and doing a few different tips and tricks, uh, I'll just show you a fairly easy way to get the dry valve off the alternator if you're changing an alternator. It can be a lot more difficult than this, but when I show you reality difficult ways and how difficult it is, some people sort of think, I don't know what I'm doing. So this is how you get your alternator belt off. All right, guys, just a quick video in case there's any doubt in my skills whatsoever, um, replacing an alternator. I just want to show you again the easy way all right, you get the tool. This is replacing the alternator or taking the tension off the drive belt. It's as simple as hook that breaker bar on, pull it up like that, all right? Then hook the belt off, right? So the belt's off now, the belt's off. Release that, right? So the belt's off. You go change your alternator, whatever you want to have a look, all right? I'll just show you, get you in there and give you a good look, right? So you can see the belt's off, right? Sit tight and we'll get the belt back on again. Right, just in case there's any doubt. I don't wanna, you know, I wanna sort of demonstrate things, reality check, you know? So you grab your bar again, again, bring it back up here to about there. Right, hook your belt back on. Make sure the teeth are in the right spot. Release it again. Now that belt's back on, like that. Take you in there and show you quickly. Right, so it's back on. That's how easy it is to get on and off. Always, as I said, triple check. You're not sure if that's real. All right, guys, so I hope you found a little bit of that footage entertaining or educational. If you did, please remember to give me the thumbs up on all the videos. And let's get started on a bit of Q&A. So I've got some uh, questions here. Questions that have been published on the YouTube channel today, Saturday the tw uh, the thirty first of Saturday the thirty first of October. Um, so I'll try and get this video out today. I'll see how much time I've got before we get interrupted. Uh, we'll try and keep it down to another what 10, 20 minutes. We'll get through some of these questions. Okay. Um, my one case is a little bit rattly. No smoke goes like stink. Very happy with the advice you've provided. Cool. Thank you for showing us that. Cool. Great video. Very helpful and clarifies a few things for me. Cool. Okay. Here we go. Strange how mm -mm, diesel, that's a, well, supposedly reputable diesel uh, business in Australia, doesn't matter who, uh, absolutely advocates a catch can, but you don't. So who do we believe? Okay, good question. And this is a good, let's give you a really good answer. Now think about it. Of course, that diesel or another diesel or any other shop they want to sell you everything they can and take your money. So, of course they're going to tell you you need a catch can, right? There's a basic amount of information they can give you to convince you that, you know, there's pros and cons of catch cans, you know. Um, there's not much benefit to them. You don't need them. I don't get paid anything for telling you you don't need a catch can. I explain the two separate systems, how one is the crankcase ventilation system and the other one is the... EGR system, and most people know are sitting there going, Anthony, why are you even explaining it for this guy? Just tell him to watch more videos. So, I'll stop at that. I've got no reason to tell you you don't need a catch can, and that we don't run catch cans on our vehicles. All our clients and people that listen to us don't use catch cans, and once they understand it, they say, please get rid of the catch can. Okay, so, EGR is the problem, not the catch can. Who do you believe? Well, you gather the information, not the marketing fluff and goo they're feeding you, okay? I'm giving you the information. Do you want information or fluff and goo? So I can't tell you who to believe. It doesn't bother me what you do. You can go and spend you a few hundred bucks and put a catch can if you like, and I'm sorry if you did already. And if you like it, that's fine too. It's not a big deal either way. We've given our reasons in other videos. You know, the compressions, the valve clearances. Think about it, you know? Uh, just think it through. When you understand those systems, you make the decision. You don't have to believe me. You just need to understand. You don't have to believe me 
or another diesel business. You need to understand the system so you can make an informed decision. And that's the idea here, to give you that information. Now, speaking of information, if you want to see some awesome, not so much mechanical, more touring, four wheel drive, touring the outback accessories, fridges, whatever you like, touring Australia. Funnily enough, it's called 4 Before Touring Australia, like 4 Before Diesel. There it is there, 4 Before Touring Australia. They're the kind of videos there. Outback Prado suspension, um, the 120 Prado setup, what mods do you need, why a freezer kills your battery, uh, fridge battery solar information, and antenna fails, right? That's all on 4 Before Touring Australia, and there's going to be more videos there. Next question, back on to the comments on here. Still kind of miss my 1KZ. Uh, not impressed with the 1KD. I don't know what's going on there. I went from a 1KZ to a 1KD. I was blown away and so was everybody else that got in the vehicle. So um, yeah, don't know what's going on there. But you're right about the excessive smoke. Anyway, questions? Thanks. That's not a question. Thank you. It all looks like the bracket was upside down. Perhaps anyway, it's a catch can. So we got rid of it. Thanks for the videos. They're very helpful for me of education. Thank you. I'm just giving the thumbs up as we go through. Looks a bit worse for wear, what was that? Uh, yeah, the old V6, yeah, that did look a bit worse for wear. Okay, um, there's, a, there's a video, how to fix a catch cam problem. So boring, it's more than boring. The boring guy from Boringville, but I am so boring, I watch it all the way to the end. That's it, beautiful. Okay, and uh, yep, uh, just looking for questions. Uh, uh, cheap product, big W. You gotta read the comments guys, there's some information there, someone recommending some degreaser. Cheers for the videos, clean the map sensor. Yeah, uh, that's a long one. I've got a 90 series one at Colorado. Yeah, um, okay, wiping my screen with a, uh, ah, I'm wiping the screen with my sleeve, but it's just dirt on your floor. <laughs> that's it. Um, sorry, yeah, I'll have to clean that floor, eh? Um, Bilstein German engine quality struts, you can believe that if you like. Oh, they probably are quality, just no good for these vehicles and the way they're used perhaps. Because they're always leaking. We don't use them, sell them, install them. We just take the leaking ones out. Uh, what else have we got? Uh, this is gold, thank you so much. But here you're getting a bit of suspension. Okay, just going through. I thought there was more questions here. I'm going to zip through. Here, what does it mean if it doesn't make the noise? The turbo, don't worry about it. You're just lucky, okay? Don't worry if it doesn't make the noise, that's good too. Sometimes they don't make the noise. The noise is normal, but sometimes they don't make the noise. In case you missed that video, guys, it's called turbo noise. Somebody asks, so what does it mean if it doesn't make the noise? It means don't worry about it still. Okay. Um, yep. Oh, I did a video. Worst thing about Prado 1GD FTV 6 speed auto. And the comment is heavy vehicle with a small underpowered motor. Spot on, mate. That's it. Um, the electrolysis at the uh, the electrolysis at the uh, EGR. So the video is called "Never Seen Anything Like It." EGR clean. We've seen a lot of these EGRs, EGR coolers. A uh, lot's probably an understatement. Um, no, it's not electrolysis from the bolts. The corrosion isn't near the bolts. It's near the the hole where the EGR exhaust gases flow in. So it's not that. But thanks anyway. Uh, can I show where the other two bolts are with this? Oh, the headlight wobble. Uh, no, I can't. Maybe another video. We'll have a look at that. Um, okay, DP chip, blah, 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 whatever. Is it true that, is it true the two button engine is made or was developed by BMW? Maybe, maybe not. I think it maybe have some truth to that, but I don't know. So I can't, cannot confirm or deny. Don't know too much about the 1GD and its engineering and develop background. That could be right. I've, I've got a feeling you're onto something there. Um, but yeah, don't know about that one. Uh, <clears throat> Toyota rear suspension is the one. Oh, it's a bit of swearing there. If we can try and avoid the swearing. You know, I appreciate your feedback. We want to put the comments up, but if there's a bit of swearing, they're, just, they're not going to come up, unfortunately. So that one is going to be remove remove okay that one's gone so that was a waste of time commenting so you're trying to leave the swear words out this is all right bloody good video mate thanks okay so that's cool um water water yeah water getting into the bearings yeah that's why we did the sealant thing so that's cool um it's like, i know we're not getting a lot of questions answered lucky i'll put a bit of information at the start of the video but stick around 
Wood lithium grease work, okay. Ch cheapest oil leak fix that works. Uh, what oil leak was it? What did I do? What was that video? Cheapest oil leak fix that works. Wood lithium grease, uh, silicon spray loop. Look, I, I can't remember the video. What, what the oil leak is, cheapest oil leak fix. I don't know whether I'd be using lithium grease work to fix anything, but I, I can't remember what the leak was. So sorry, I'd have to watch the video. Uh, nicely made video top work. So glad you mentioned this. Yep. Uh, do you mind talking about the booster diet a bit? Yes, here we go. Here's one. Do you mind talking about the booster diet a bit? Finn, here we go. We're going to talk about the booster diet a bit. Okay, so on eBay. Okay, this guy in Greensboro, I think he's a retired uh, auto electrician or something like that. It's really just a fuse that's been modified. Or I think you can buy empty fuse bodies. They put a diode in, I'm not the electronics engineer on it at all, but they, it's about 50 bucks delivered to your door. I know it's, it might seem like a lot of money, but you gotta understand, you know, if someone's got nothing better to do, then okay, uh, you know, how do I explain it? Maybe you should say they're 10 bucks, but you know, people have got better things to do than get all the components, put it together, put it in an envelope, deal with the sale, check the bank for 10 bucks, right? So small fruit is what it's called. If you're doing 100 a day, then maybe you can do that, but he's probably doing two a week, or I don't know what the deal is, but we've had them in our 120. We've had a booster diode. It goes in the fuse box under the bonnet. I think it replaces either a seven and a half or a 10 amp fuse. I can't remember. I've only ever installed a handful. Um, all the vehicles I've installed them in were many years ago. They've been going good for years. If you have any problems with them, He's going to look after your service wise and replace that. There's dozens or hundreds of people that have got them. I'm talking, you know, it goes back 10 years, this thing. We're in 2020 now, 2010. It increases the voltage. So the alternator is a variable voltage, right? There's nothing wrong with the voltage of the alternator. It'll still charge two batteries is what I'll say on the 1KD. But another half a volt's good for a lot of batteries and it's not going to hurt any battery really. So it's still going to vary, very variable voltage but it may be up near the mid 14s at some time and it'll go no lower than say, maybe 13 and a half, 13, seven, 13, eight, this sort of thing. Um, instead of being variable from say 13.3 to 14, somewhere there, it's gonna be variable from 13.7 to 14.3 or something like that to give you a ballpark area. So better voltage overall. Um, yeah, it's just a goer, mate, you know, just, if an alternator can charge one battery, it can charge two. It can keep two batteries charged, no problem. No DC, DC charges needed. There's a place for those, like in caravans, where you're a long way from your charge source, where you've got the voltage drop and you have to spend a million dollars in cables. You're better off just using the, the minimal cable you need to get to your, you've still got to use a, a size cable to get to your DC, DC charger, but in some cases they may be better, of course, they're very good solar charge controls as well, the DC-DC chargers. So for some people, some batteries, that may work. Where people think they need one, that's probably where they're causing their own problem from my experience, which is limited. We've only got those in a couple of vehicles, but we do watch people, camp with people, and we see what happens with people and their, you know, they've got their DC-DC chargers and their battery problems. I look at a number of mistakes they're making. So there you go, I talked about it a bit. Um, it is a cool product. eBay, he's in Greensboro. That, one, that comment got three thumbs up, so I hope those people and a whole lot more are listening and got that bit of information, okay? So there's a few different versions. There might be Mark II, Mark III. I think I just got the Mark III. It was the dearer one. It was maybe, you know, instead of 40, it was about 52. There's other people that have copied and sell them and other brands and whatever. Mate, I just like supporting, you know, it's going to be, you know, some Aussie guy in his uh, back shed, uh, some old retired guy. I've never met him. If he watches my videos and he's a, please make contact. Let me know a bit more about the product so I can share that with people and uh, let's sell even more of them for you because I like them. And I've never really known of a problem. It's one of those things where you, you just know you're going to get good service. I'll put my, I'll say, you know, you're going to get good service if there's a, if there's a problem on one. Anyway, let's look for another question. Um, I understand the desire for more power. Mine is pretty sluggish. I wish they would make a six cylinder motor. Yeah, dead set, absolutely. All right, um, long comments, looking for the question. Someone's sharing um, PID codes, okay? Um, so that's good, I've done that also on Facebook and here and there, you gotta find those videos or those posts, but if you look in the comments, you'll see someone sharing those uh, PIDs. They're the codes that you can put into a scan tool 
The one here is the soot load, which I previously shared. The torque converter lockup also, and we've got some other ones as well, guys. It's just a matter of following all the information. Um, and I think here on YouTube, on both the channels, being subscribed is the best way to do it. Uh, thanks for this, TGM Bar, my Prado. This, God, we've only got back three days so far. Um, someone said about recovery points. Good, I don't need them. What are my thoughts on the iDrive throttle control unit? So, good question. Again, someone asking a question. What are your thoughts on the iDrive throttle control unit? Okay, so we had one installed on the 2019 one GD FTV for the simple reason, the 1KDs we've gotten driven all that, we didn't think you need it. They seem to go well, never really uh, needed it. See everybody that's got them and they love them and all that. If I want to go faster, I just push the foot harder. The problem with the 1GD is the right foot, it's very sluggish, it doesn't have to talk, whatever. So I thought it was going to solve the problem and it does make it a bit more fun to drive. But we've already talked about the transmission software issue where the torque converter unlocks and it kicks down too soon. Well, that made that problem worse, okay? It did, it made the problem worse, so I took it off the vehicle. So what are my thoughts? If you wanna feel like your car's faster than it is, go ahead and get one. If you're gonna get one, sure, get the iDrive. It's basically remapping a couple of things, mainly your throttle, and it's kinda of like you're just flooring it when you're not, you know what I mean? So you push it a little bit and you go, wow, this goes good. Uh, you haven't got much more there when you push it harder, so. It just doesn't matter. Look, what whatever you want to do. They're only a couple, one, two or three hundred bucks. So that's my thoughts on it. Hopefully that's answered the question and helped you make a decision if it's not too late. I'm not saying I don't like them. I'm saying I don't like it on a 1GD because the transmission of the software is already too sensitive. Toyota, in my opinion, need to come up with new software for the six-speed auto. And people have said it's the same in the 200 series. It just unlocks and it slips the torque converter. It makes heat. I've heard them before, those 200, the one VDs, there's a lot of engine noise, a lot of fan and revving kind of noise instead of engine noise. The one KDs are just, they're grouse. Anyway, moving on from that one. Um, uh, somebody asked a question, a lot of these tunes and remaps claim better fuel consumption and lower EGTs. Does anyone have any experience either way? There's no comments there. I can tell you that uh, better fuel consumption is possible but that's like a detune, you know what I mean? You can't use less fuel and go better. It's simple as that, okay? You can't use less fuel and go better you, it, without getting too complicated, okay? Simple statement. And um, lower EGTs, again, less power, less fuel, less pushing the pedal, you're gonna get lower. The more you push the pedal, the more EGTs you get. The more fuel, the more power, the higher. So you can't, it's just marketing fluff and goo, all this stuff, you know? You can't. Does it make sense to you? Think it through. Uh, you can't have more power and better economy. Now, don't get me wrong. There's, you can get in one part of the range, you can get better economy, but it's going to be real sluggish there. Do you know what I mean? You can't have power and responsiveness and economy together. And that's why I believe Toyota's software, mapping, tune, whatever you want to call it, as it comes out of the box, is well done, covering all aspects, well balanced except for the 1GD, but you're dealing with a small engine and a big car, so you can't really get it right because you've started with an engine that's too small. Belongs in a Fortuner. Oh, funny, it is the Fortuner, there you go. So in a Fortuner, probably not a bad engine, but in a Prado, certainly too small. A Hilux is a maybe. If you keep it fairly stock and that, maybe they go all right, but I've got to tell you recently, um, I mentioned it, I think, on a Facebook post, but we kind of lined up a 1GD, a, a Hilux, a rugged Hilux, what's it called? Rugged, you know, uh, 2,400 kilos, he says it is. Um, and my 1KD 120 Prado there in the top right picture, it's 2,800 kilos. Storage systems, steel roof racks, heavy duty side steps, bull bars, whatever, all the gear, the batteries. We lined it up at our number sets of lights, obviously only to the speed limit. Blew him away every time. You want another chance, another chance, another chance, another chance. The old 120, 2,800 kilos. Blew away the 1GD stock standard Hilux, okay? You got it? Uh, both around about, you know, whatever. It just doesn't matter. Blew him away, not beat him a little bit. Blew him away, blew him away, okay? So the evidence is in. No dynos needed. So there you go. That's a little bit more on tunes and remaps. So all good information sharing in these videos. So those of you, I hope you hung around because it's just real information, you know? So, something serious is wrong with the Hilux Protos down under. You guys have way too many failed pistons. Psh, no, we don't have many, actually. We're just telling you about them, 
maybe we talk about them too much and it looks like that. So don't be confused. Um, it's just nowhere else in the world have you got someone that's talking about these things and trying to help people avoid these problems, okay? They're the best engines, they're the best cars, it's just we're talking about it to avoid it. All the other brands, they can sweep it under the carpet. What Toyota might even want to do, sweep under the... We don't sweep it under the carpet, we clean it up, we're here to help. So we've picked the best vehicles, that's what we own and use, and that's what we're going to help you maintain, prevent, and repair where necessary. Okay. Um, okay, catch can or not. Someone says, I've got a 200. Is it the same case? Don't need one. Question mark, question mark. Tired of throwing money at cars for supposed must-haves. Only to find out it's mostly BS and all marketing spin. Bingo! You are on the money. You are the winner. Come up and claim your prize. Okay. So that's the deal, guys. Marketing spin. We're calling it, you know... Uh, old mate of mine, he used to call it, well, he probably still does call it, but he's an old mate of mine, you know. Uh, marketing fluff and goo. That's one thing I remember, one thing I like. Yep, marketing fluff and goo. Taught each other very many wonderful things. Anyway, um, the only remap I need is one that turns the EJR valve off. That's it. Yeah, that's about right. Is that one got a thumbs up or two? Quality tune will increase performance and will be safe if tuned properly. Obviously, a reply from a tuner. Thanks anyway. Why would you want a two and a half ton with a 2.8 engine? Exactly. Spot on. I'm laughing too. Okay. Always invaluable content. What device? No, you don't want to buy one of these scan tools. They only do Toyotas. Expensive. If you're going to go spend money on a scan tool, if you want to do just Toyotas, buy tech screen, deal with a headache, get it going on your laptop. That's your cheapest way. If you want to buy a proper scan tool, go and buy something you're going to spend thousands. You're going to spend less than getting a Toyota Intelligent Tester tool. You'll get a small uh, snap-on tool even for about three grand that does all the cars. But I would suggest, unless you're in the trade, I've said it before in other videos, sorry guys to repeat myself, this is someone who hasn't gone and watched the rest of the videos. Charlie, please watch the other videos and you'll have those answers. You don't want to buy one of those. Okay. Um, someone said if people feel like they have more, need more go, then a re-gear is the better option there, maybe. Anyway, um, yep, uh, just skimming through. We're going to try and wrap this up soon. Uh, and injector cleaner. Injector, you can't clean injectors. They're clean already, guys. They're not clean. It's not about injector cleaner. Uh, some people would like to talk about injector. I haven't got much to say on injector products, okay? You think about it, guys. If you see, if somebody puts up some water or fuel with water in, it's all dirty and messy and you pour a product in and it makes it all disappear like magic. Where's that magic wand? It's still, it's still in there. It's still gonna go through your fuel system. Some's gonna get stopped at the filter. Maybe it's not now that it's like that. I don't know. I'd rather leave it in the form that it's in so it stays separated and ends up in the bottom of the filter and it's got its best chance of not going through the rest of the system. By doing that to it, and I don't know what the word is, I can't remember, you know. It's a bit like, you know, it's like a swimming pool. You throw some product in there and it grabs all the dirt and the dust I find and it makes it, you know, like that. There's a word for it. You can put it in the comments, right? I know I know the word, I just can't think of it. Is it coagulate? You know, that, there's other words like that, you know, something else. Anyway, it doesn't matter. I don't like, look, I've said it before, the products we use, um, and I'm not saying it's the best, it's just what we use. It's called Knockout. It's a Lubramax product, trade product. They want you to put it in customers' cars when you service, when you get your car back, oh, it's all nice and quiet, you're happy. Gee, Anthony, you're awesome, what did you do? You know, that magic wand again. Nah, look, it increases the cetane, so it's gonna help with the problem, but it's not really a problem, it's just increasing the cetane. So any diesel engine that's a bit noisy, a bit knocky, it's gonna quieten it down. Um, so we use it in the 120, yeah. yeah. I think it does work a little bit. Um, so if you want that product, let me know if you're within arm's reach of me and you come to the Prado Hospital, I can get you a box of the product. It's like, I don't know, 130 bucks or something for a box of, you get a box of 12 little three, 350 mil bottles, uh, it's one mil per litre. It's up to you, it'll last you a year, it lasts ages like, so you're going to spend, but I'm not trying to sell it to you. Like I said, I'm not here to sell you anything guys, I don't really care, okay? Um, all the parts, see the parts on the bench over there, the parts we do is because people ask for it, they want it. They want to get the right injectors, they want the whole kit, they want the pops, they want the gaskets, they want to, they don't want to do the run and round 20 places. Oh, I can't get Molly Cut. Yeah, we've got the whole kit there, right? We've got the wheel bearing kits for the front of the Prados and Hiluxes. 
plenty in stock on the Prados, not too many highlighters. The big front engine kit, you know, water pump, timing belts and all that. It's sold as a whole kit, okay? And we can supply your Dominson suspension. If you want it, we're happy to help you out and supply it. We only supply what we use and recommend on our own vehicles. I'm not here to stock 10 different brands of suspension. This isn't a shop, guys, okay? It's not a shop, okay? I'm only keeping what I need to keep to work on cars and to service what you're asking for. I'm only gonna give you the best parts, kits, information, and service. I've said it before. And on that note, let's just quickly say, as I said, it's 31st of October. I always say I'm on holidays, most school holidays. I do a lot of other trips throughout the year. Whenever you're ordering parts, please prepare for delays. Normally the worst, best time to contact me is in the morning. I only work school hours. So Monday mornings from 8 a.m. is okay. That's usually the best day. Now, from now on, after next week, the first week of November, we've been in lockdown, COVID-19. All our trips have been canceled this year. We're gonna be getting out a lot. That doesn't mean I'm not here for months. It means I'm in and out, I'm in and out. You don't know what day I'm gonna be here. You don't know what day I'm gonna be out, two days out, three days out, a week out, two weeks out, a month out. So plan ahead. If you watch this video and you've gone this deep, hopefully you get this message. At the moment, this week, the first week of November, it's business as usual. Parks Mondays from 8 a.m., shoot me a text. After that, the whole week, working on cars, parts is okay, please do it in the morning. Don't do it in the afternoon, especially not Friday. Who wants to start work 4 p.m. on a Friday afternoon? Guys, if you're in WA, as soon as you wake up, first thing in the morning, 7 a.m., 6 a.m., whatever, send a message, because it's already three hours later here. We've got daylight saving, plus two hours. When you wake up at seven, that's eight, nine, 10 o'clock for me. My morning's half gone. So please do it as soon as you wake up. Think when you're wetting your eyes open, oh, I've got to text that guy in Victoria because he's going to be whinging, complaining if I text him at two in the afternoon because he's finished at five o'clock. Dead set, right, that's well after school. When I say school hours, guys, it's because I need to say that I've got other aspects of the business to do outside those hours as well. Don't think that's it. I'll work stupid hours and it's going to stop. It's going to come to end. We're going to reduce it down. Thanks for watching. I'll get back to what I'm trying to say and that is if you need parts, any... Forget about getting in the Prado Hospital this year now, basically, really. Uh, if you've got something urgent or you really wanted to get done, what you, I don't book, I'll give you the tip now, I don't book well in advance. I don't book in two weeks, three weeks, four weeks, five weeks, six weeks. Oh, you want a date in December or January or next year? I've got a diary for next year. I don't want to know what's happening then. That could be a 40 degree day. I'm not working on that day. Even if we've got the split system and the word, it doesn't matter what we got and how hot or cold we can make it in the Prado Hospital. I'm not working on 40 degree days, you know. Uh, I've got to be out and about. I've got to be down the beach, mate, in boats, out fishing. We've got to be jet skiing. We've got to be swimming in rivers in the high country, wherever we're going to be. And it's not just in summer because in other areas of the country, it's summer and winter. And that's when we're away as well. So my warning is prepare for delays. If you're going to send that text message, your best way to start the date is watch it. If you're in Australia, if you go to Combine Parts Office, we can only service Australia for parts, right? So if you want to know what's happening in Australia, make sure you like and follow our two Facebook pages. A, the Prado Hospital and Prado Hilux 1K TV injectors. The Prado Hospital's like the servicing information to try and help and share with you. And if we do some work on a Prado here and we see it, we're going to show you, we're going to put it on. We might share links from our YouTube channel. We'll just put it all on YouTube to keep it simple. So the only place you really need to be is YouTube, but you need to be subscribed and have that bell on if you want to hear me say, hey guys, I'm taking three weeks off now. So if you want parts, you've got a week to do it. If you miss that message, that's it. You're done, mate. You wanted injectors in three weeks. I'm gone. Then you've got to risk it and get them somewhere else maybe, you know. What are you going to end up with? Chinese, uh, remanufactured, uh, some old stock that hasn't got the latest upgrades, you know, the bigger body and all that. Nah, it's not worth the risk. This is a job you've got to get right the first time, right? Uh, you're going to leave them in there another five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten years, maybe longer for some people. Up to you, right? Uh, a lot of variables there. Just trying to warn you. Doesn't bother me, guys. Sorry when I'm on holidays, I'm on holidays. I'll help it. Sometimes we've got people in place where we can do parts, but because it's me, I'm still taking the inquiries, doing the sales and forwarding. I'm still working when I'm on holidays. Not good. So I think I'm going to stop doing that, okay? Uh, at the moment, it's just me. I'm not going to pass that part of the business 
I take the orders. I know the parts. I pack the parts, right? They're all here. They go all the way along the bench, right? Not much in the picture here. This is the this is the relax area. You can see the building now. You want to get in the Prada Hospital? If we did a bit extra for you, you want favours, you want a discount? We don't do any of that, but if you want to butter me up, there's some Vanilla Galliano, there's some Canadian Club. Those Canadian black cans work okay. Uh, you know, the workers, the helpers, they like Coronas. We also, uh, nothing wrong with a Great Northern either, right? So, there you go, I've given you all the information. I think we finished the Q&A, did we? Or am I going to talk a little bit more? Is there a particular torque spec those bolts must be tightened to? He's talking about on suspension and struts. We don't use torque specifications on heavy components like suspension. We've been working on cars for decades. You may want to look those up. I don't know what they are. We don't use them. We just know from experience where things need to be. Okay, uh, there's, a, there's a video called Prado at 450,000 Ks. Where is the engine bay? Well, the engine bay, we, we did a video under the car. People complain it's too long, mate, so we had to stop. Where's the engine bay? It's in another video somewhere. Go look at those, right? We've got plenty of engine bay videos, right? Uh, where's the engine bay? Uh, love the videos. Learned so much from this channel. Thanks, Anthony. And I'll give you the thumbs up. Thank you. Give you the love heart, actually. I appreciate all those uh, positive comments, guys. We like to stay positive, and if you want to help in a positive way, please share the channel. Always give it the thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe. Turn the bell on. Um, skimming through if there's any more questions quickly and we'll wrap it up um, hoping the remap's been removed I don't think it has been removed um, how is the 1KD found in the 90 series it's found in the 90 series overseas so there must be some uh, guy in Australia I'm not sure just rest assured Toyota is an international company and they make many more cars than what come to Australia and different makes and models and engine options that we don't get in Australia. We get what TMCA give us. The 1KD is in 90 series. Overseas it was out long before we got it. That's why it comes to us and most of all the problems are ironed out. That's why these cars are so good, right? So, love to see a bit on the 4 liter 120 Prado. Done that a couple of times now. So we do listen, here to help. Okay guys, I think that's it. I'm pretty sure we're gonna wrap it up. I don't know what else I can say. Bada bing, bada boom. Um, yeah, that's what we say, isn't it? A bit of butter, bing, butter, boom. Hope you enjoyed that. Uh, I've got half an hour chit chat plus all the other footy I've got to add on, so keep me busy for 45 minutes on Saturday, the 31st of October. Thanks for watching. Remember that thumbs up, please. Butter, bing, butter, boom. I'm out of here. Thanks for watching, guys. See ya.